So we're here today in a learning conference filled with teachers to talk to you about something we like to call peer-assisted learning. In other words, we're here to talk to you about how most of student learning is actually done without you teachers. <laughs> my name is Edwin Ja, and I'm a sophomore here at NIS. And this is my older brother, Winston, who's a senior. So you may be thinking about our opening line, like, what are two students doing up here telling us how they learn without us? Well, trust us, we're going somewhere with this. Namely, we'd like to talk about the value of peer-assisted learning in a school's educational environment, and how this form of learning actually goes to build upon learning done in the classroom to help students succeed. <laughs> Now, our story is a personal story of brothers learning and the crossroads of our academic journeys. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a grade 10 student here at NIS, and something I've realized as my academic journey begins to creep towards the immovable stone wall, also known as the diploma program. <laughs> It's tough. Yeah. <laughs> is that topics taught in school aren't clicking as easily as they used to with me. School is becoming tougher. Now, I look at some of my peers who get around this by studying in cram school, or others by extensively asking the teacher, or even having five-hour-long Google search extravaganzas. <laughs> But what I constantly find is more effective for me as a learner is enlisting the help of others to learn with me. Or in most of my cases, that would be going downstairs and begging my older brother for help. Now, about a month ago, I had my first math test of the year on linear functions. And being the model student that I was, I definitely did not study as much as I was supposed to. I'm sorry, Mr. Beck, if you're out in the audience. <laughs> anyway, it's not so much that I didn't study. It's that I felt like if I studied, I wouldn't be able to understand everything. And that scared me. I was feeling self-doubt. But to avoid utterly bombing this test, I mustered up whatever little motivation I had, and paper in hand, knocked on my brother's door. <laughs> my perspective looked like this. I was also in the middle of studying for a math test, calculus, which, of course, being the model students we are, I had also just started studying for. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Galati. <laughs> However, I thought this. He's doing linear functions. I'm doing calculus. I'm just doing what he's doing. Advanced two years. So it can't, hurt to help. it can't hurt to return to the basics, right? I decided to teach him and to help him. In the process, I was forming new analogies, making up new ways to explain things. And if he didn't understand them, well, Einstein once said, If you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it well enough. The fault was on me, too, and it was a challenge to me. And from my pers perspective, it went like this. Since this is my brother we were talking about, I knew going in that I would be <laughs> subject to constant reminders of my incompetence and, <laughs> and harsh language that I would not dare repeat on this stage. But it was in this harshness in the arguments, in the back-and-forth insults constantly thrown at each other, that it clicked. It was like magic, but by the end of that night, the two-hour-long study session, I had understood the topic and everything I went down there to learn. And two weeks later, as I held my graded test paper, <laughs> wondering how I achieved the score that I did, the revelation occurred. Learning is not supposed to be an individual activity. Learning does not have to happen in the classroom within the given allocated class time. When the final bell rings and the test is handed in, the arguments that ensue outside the classroom of which answers everyone thought was correct is the learning. When it's five minutes before a test and everyone is gathered around a piece of paper in the bathroom trying to figure out an unsolvable question on the review sheet, that's where the learning happens. My brother and I are here today to argue that this is the true essence of learning and how a teacher's job should not only be to teach, but to try and facilitate and nurture the spirit of peer-assisted learning. With that in mind, we'd like to phrase the rest of this talk as an open letter to all you teachers out here. We know you're here to help. You're at this conference to learn how to better help. But as many of you may have realized, how a student learns is not directly the result 
of a teacher. Now, this is not to mean any offense to teachers. There are many students who are perfectly comfortable and happy to be in class with teachers, myself and my brother included. We answer questions, we ask questions, but as you teachers know best, there are just a few students who don't raise their hands. Sometimes we don't feel comfortable. And I thought really hard about why, coming to this conclusion. Students are young. We're shy, believe it or not. This is kind of scary. <laughs> But the thing about that is, we're fueled by that validation we get from our peers in getting something right. We don't want our peers to know that we're wrong, so we keep it in if we're unsure. The only students who will raise their hands are probably those who have a rough idea of what the answer is. And those students don't need those questions. But maybe some confused students do take the initiative to come up to you. Maybe they do take that leap of courage. But for those who don't, the class is over. They've been through it. They simply need to go home, memorize the material, do a bit of practice, and get a good grade. Now, while some might say, yeah, this is learning, we'd say otherwise. We'd say learning happens when you're in a library or a cafe with a couple of friends going over and critiquing each other's ideas, essays, assignments. When this is happening, we're basically talking with peers who are in no way more qualified or more knowledgeable than us, allowing us to better understand our flaws and our accuracies. We may say, well, just go find a teacher. But that's like getting an answer spoon-fed to you. You're not learning that much in the process. Yeah. Now, we'd like to take it over to you guys. Yeah. So, how we're phrasing this is, since you teachers are actually the experts on peer-assisted learning, it's not like you guys have a teacher-teacher all the time, <laughs> well, We want to turn it over to you guys. My teachers really enjoy probing questions. So does anyone out in the audience have some experience to do with peer-assisted learning that they'd like to share? No one? That's okay. No, no, it's okay. You guys aren't too comfortable, right? <laughs> We get that. <laughs> yeah. Look around at how many people actually raise their hands. Now, I didn't see many, maybe one or two going Shy. like this, <laughs> but, yeah. So, as you can see, we're putting the pressure on to you guys, and similar feelings of this shyness, nervousness, and fear are what's felt by us students when we're in the same situation. Learning in the classroom is important, but it takes courage to stand up and give your opinion. Everyone's scared of being wrong, and we're all scared of demonstrating in front of our peers that we don't understand. Yeah. But this is where peer-assisted learning can come in. When you're surrounded by maybe just my brother or one or two other good friends, you're able to embrace your shortcomings because you're comfortable with them. They're your friends, they're your people you choose to be around, and it's all right to be wrong because nobody knows if they're right or wrong. And in the back and forth process of bickering, you're learning. And to emphasize our point, picture this. When you leave this hall to go on a break, maybe you stop by the lounge to get a bite. Someone brings up this topic, and you start discussing the contents of this very speech, forming new ideas and concepts along the way. In this back and forth process, you guys are using peer assisted learning. You guys do it all the time. But we have to admit, peer assisted learning is kind of paradoxical. The idea that learning done out inside the classroom is not nearly as important as work done outside the classroom. It's weird, counterintuitive, but if you think about it, the pieces of information that stick around the most are the pieces you argue about, the pieces you joke about, and the ones you talk about. In a way, it's a pretty beautiful way to learn, don't you think? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.